Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to talk about all things GameCube. This is one of my favorite systems of all time. I was in my early 20s when it first came out, and my roommates had a PS2 and Xbox already, but I decided to pick one of these up, and I really enjoyed the catalog. And I feel like we had some really excellent contributions to some of my favorite franchises, including Metroid and Paper Mario and Star Fox, and to be honest, I even like Super Mario Sunshine. And so I've always had a special place in my heart for the Nintendo GameCube catalog, and it's been really great over this past year because we've been getting a lot of handhelds that can actually play this system. In fact, I think that 2024 is really the year where for $200 or cheaper, you can play most GameCube games on a handheld, and that's awesome. Now, as I've started to play more and more of my GameCube favorites, I found myself missing one little aspect of the whole experience. And that is the old boot logo that came when you started up your GameCube. Let's do a quick nostalgic take right now. And yeah, I love the look and sound of this boot logo. Now today, what we're gonna do is actually get that onto all of your different emulator systems. And it's actually a lot easier than you might think. It's just a matter of getting the right BIOS file and then renaming it and putting it in a certain folder. From there, it just takes one little settings tweak within the Dolphin emulator and you'll be right as rain. And so that's gonna be the focus of this video and I'm hoping to keep it pretty short and sweet. We're gonna set this up on various different handhelds, including the Steam Deck, as well as on your PC. On top of that, I will show you how to get it working for each of the three major regions regions that were supported by the GameCube. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, to start, in order to fully set this up, you're going to need two different BIOS files, the PAL version as well as the NTSC version. Now, like with game files, these BIOS files are copyrighted, so you're going to have to find them on your own. Now, there are various different BIOSes you can use. It doesn't have to be these ones that are specifically named, and so if you find any others, they will likely work. Just make sure you grab a PAL version as well as an NTSC one. Now for this initial setup, we're going to do it on PC and then we'll move on to other devices here in a moment. But for all these, you're going to be using the Dolphin emulator and so the process will be very similar. To start, go into the menu bar and select File and then Open User Folder. Within here, you're going to see a folder that says GC for GameCube. Go ahead and open that up. Now within here, you'll see three different regions, Europe, Japan, and USA. And we'll start by using the North American region. Now it's not as simple as just dragging and dropping. You have to rename this BIOS file. You have to name it IPL.bin. And of note, the IPL needs to be in uppercase and the bin has to be in lowercase. Anyway, once you've renamed that, you can move that over into the GameCube USA folder. And that's it, we have now installed it, but we first need to turn it on in the settings. So we're gonna go into the configuration menu and then the GameCube tab. And then within there, you will see a section that says IPL settings. Below that, you'll find an option that says skip main menu, and this will be turned on by default. We want to turn this off. Once that's done, close out of these settings and then boot up a game that's from the US region. So for my test case, we're going to use the American version of Animal Crossing. And sure enough, when you boot it up, you're going to see the GameCube logo. How awesome is that? Now, not only is the GameCube logo super cool and nostalgic to look at, but it actually has some functions to it as well. Let's close out of the game and then start it right back up. And when you first see that GameCube logo, if you press and hold onto the A button, it's going to bring you into the BIOS menu. And I don't know about you, but this fills me with a lot of nostalgia just to see it. Now, within Dolphin, there's not a lot of functionality within the BIOS menu because a lot of it's already been configured within the settings. But you could go in here and change out like stereo and mono sound. And you could also adjust the date and time, but it's probably going to be correct anyway. And you can also launch the game directly from here if you would like, but the one function I think is actually pretty helpful is you can go through and navigate and adjust the memory card. So if you'd like, you can remove a save from your memory card or even move it over to the second memory card if you would like. Again, this is something you can do within the Dolphin user file system anyway, but it is pretty neat to be able to do it directly on the device like this. But really, that's about it when it comes to the BIOS menu. I think it's really just all about getting that boot logo in the first place. Now, once you have this set up for the US region, you're not quite done yet, because if you want to try a game from outside of that region, it's no longer going to work. So for example, if I try to open up the European version of Animal Crossing, you can see that the game is going to immediately crash. Now, there are two different things you could do. One is just to go into the configuration settings again and then turn on that skip main menu under the IPL settings. And yes, sure enough, when you do that, the game is going to boot up just fine, but you will not have a boot logo either in the US or European region. So the trick here is to add the PAL BIOS as well. It's going to be the exact same process. So we'll go into the GameCube folder, then the Europe folder, and then we have to rename our PAL BIOS file to IPL.bin. Same thing here, we'll just move it over to the European region and we are good to go. Now, you might be wondering about the Japan region, say if you're going to be playing a Japanese game. Well, Japan also used NTSC for GameCube, so what we can do is just open up the USA folder, and then we can copy this IPL bin and then paste it into the Japanese folder as well. And that's it, we now have all three regions working correctly for the GameCube. 
Now we can go back into the Dolphin configuration menu and then turn off that skip main menu option. And now no matter what region your game is from, when you start it up, you will see that boot logo. It's going to be the same across all three regions. Of note, if you go into the BIOS menu with the European ROM, you can go and change out the language. And you've got six different options, English, German, French, Spanish, Italian, and Dutch. However, this also is not really necessary because you can also change that within the Dolphin menu. In fact, it's right there under the IPL settings menu, and you do not need the BIOS to change out the system language. You can do this anytime you want. And to test, we can open up Japanese games as well. So here's the Japanese version of Animal Crossing. And sure enough, yep, yeah, same boot logo and everything. And each of these regions will have their own memory card as well as save games. And so you can go into these and manage these yourself as well. And really that's about it when it comes to setting up Dolphin on a PC. If you're using a Windows-based handheld, it'd be the exact same process as well. But let's say you have an Android-based device. Let me show you how to set that one up next. The first thing we want to do is get those BIOS files onto our Android-based device. For this, I've just put in my SD card for the Odin 2, and then I put my IPL files here on the SD card on the left. Now, both of these files are named the exact same thing, IPL.bin, and so as a result, I wanted to give them some sort of characteristics so I knew the difference between the two. So I've gone ahead and named one of them PAL, IPL.bin, and the other one NTSC. Now, when I put it into my Odin, I'll be able to identify which one is which. Next, I'm going to put the SD card back into my device, and then I'm going to open up the regular files app. Not the fancy like Google Files or anything else like that, just the standard regular one. And now I'll press the menu button on the top left to bring up the sidebar, and there I can see my SD card. If I scroll down a bit, I can find my two IPL files, and now it's just a matter of drag and drop. So I'm going to select this one and then select copy two, and then I'll open up the side menu again. Now, if you've already been using Dolphin on your device, when you open up that Files app in the sidebar, you will see the Dolphin user files. So we're going to click on this, and it's going to take us to the exact same setup we had on PC. So here we want to go into the GC folder and then pick your region. In this case, we're going to pick the USA one. From there, we'll copy over that file. And then once it's done, let's do the same thing, but with the PAL version. So we're going to select it, then do Copy to, then go into the Dolphin user file system, then GC, and then Europe. And same thing here, we will then copy that file over. Next, we'll go into those Dolphin system files. So we'll go back into the menu, then pick the Dolphin emulator, and then GC. We'll start with the European one first. And the only thing we have to do here is just rename this file to the plain IPL.bin. So on the top right, there's an option to rename, and then we'll remove the PAL in the space. There we go, we're good to go. Let's do the same thing with US, but then obviously we're going to take off the NTSC. And once we've renamed it, let's go ahead and copy this and move it over to the Japanese folder as well. And some of these steps may not be necessary for you if you're not going to be playing with any other region other than your own, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, once we moved over all of our files, we're now ready to go into the Dolphin app itself. Now we'll go into Settings, and then Config, and then GameCube. And sure enough, within here we have the IPL settings, so we just want to toggle off the thing that says Skip Main Menu. And that's it, from now on, anytime we open up a GameCube game, it's going to show that boot logo. But one thing you may notice is depending on your software settings, you may see a bunch of text when you first start it up. And that can kind of get away of the whole boot logo experience, so let me show you how to get rid of that. We're going to exit out of the game, and then go back into the main Dolphin menu, and then within Settings, we're going to go into Config, and then Interface. If we scroll down a bit, there are two Two options I would recommend turning off. And it's going to be these two right here. Use panic handlers and then show on-screen display messages. Now bear in mind that when turning these off, it is going to limit the messages you will see. So for example, it won't tell you that it saved a game when it saves it. And then also if there's a compatibility error with the game, it's not going to give you that indication. So it is a bit of a trade-off to be able to get a nice clean look when it comes to that boot logo. Anyway, let's try it again. And yeah, sure enough here, we have minimal text on the front as we boot up the game. And of note, even when you're using the Android version, if you press and hold the A button, it will bring you into the BIOS menu. So if you want to adjust your game saves, you can do that here within the menu. That's pretty handy. And once you have this set up, it's going to work well with any front end that you can think of. Emulation Station, Daijisho, all these are going to work the same. You'll boot up your game, you'll see the boot logo, and then the game will start. One of my favorite things about the GameCube boot logo is that it's fairly short, and so because of that, I don't really mind having it on there. It just gives me a little bit of a nostalgic kick. By contrast, I don't really like using the boot logo for either PS1 or PS2 just because they are so darn long. And of course, that's all going to be personal preference. Now, setting this up for Steam Deck is going to be very similar as well, but let's run through it really quickly. To start, you need to be in desktop mode. From there, go into the bottom left, and under the menu bar, go to the game section and then find the Dolphin emulator. And this is going to be very similar to how it is on PC, so we're going to go to File, Open User Folder, and then here under GC, you will find your three different regions, and then within there, you will put your BIOS files. Just make sure that you name each of them IPL.bin. After that, go into the Configuration Settings, go into the GameCube tab, and then turn off the Skip Main Menu option. And that's it from now on, anytime you start up a game, you will get the boot logo as well.
Anyway, that's about it for this video. I think that the GameCube boot logo is one of the lesser known features of the Dolphin emulator, and so I do hope that you enjoyed this. I think this is one of those little touches that really makes emulation special. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you already been using this, or do you plan on using it in the future? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.